In this video, we are going to learn how the internal energy changes with temperature at constant pressure. This video follows on an explanation for the variation of internal energy with volume and temperature, uh, which we have done in a prior video. Here's kind of the wrap up of that variation of internal energy with volume and temperature. Uh, you can study that variation by taking total derivatives of internal energy uh, with respect to volume and temperature, and then we've come up with an expression that looks like this. Uh, this is what we call the internal pressure, and uh, that first derivative is just the heat capacity at constant temperature. Okay, so this is our uh, starting point for uh, understanding a little bit better the variation of the internal energy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. So again, our goal is to figure out how the internal energy changes with temperature but enforcing constant pressure. All right, so let's see. Uh, the first thing that we do is, is we divide all terms of this expression by differential of t. Okay, so we do that here, we're gonna do that here, and of course, that then cancels out. And now we enforce constant pressure conditions. Okay, so uh, constant pressure, that's what you will uh, be obtaining. And of course, now all those are going to be partial derivatives. Okay. All right, so uh, let's see what we can learn from here. Notice that here we have a new term, which is the fir first derivative of the volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure. All right, so let's think about this for a little bit. Uh, you have constant pressure, so you can think about this as an open system to the atmosphere. And this is how the volume of a substance changes with temperature. So you're going to heat a sample and observe if there's any variation to the volume of that sample. And it turns out that we know that uh, substances do change with, with uh, temperature, the volume changes, and there's many examples in real life. For example, bridges uh, need to have joints so that they don't uh, uh, crack when, when this dramatic changes in temperature and so forth. Gases change, change very dramatically uh, the volume changes very dramatically with temperature, and the variable that actually allows you to uh, understand a little bit better this, this um, variation of the volume with temperature is uh, the expansion coefficient. Okay, so that expansion coefficient, which we're going to call uh, alpha, is defined as 1 over the volume, partial derivative of the volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure. Okay? So what we can do here is simply solve for that uh, first derivative, and that is simply going to be equal to the product of alpha and the volume. Okay, so uh, we actually have then a way to figure out what this is. Okay, so now that is simply going to be uh, the expansion coefficient multiplied by the volume. Okay, so well, very good. That's uh, how the internal energy depends with uh, temperature at constant pressure. Right, so now we can actually ask the question of, well, what happens if this is an ideal gas? Well, we've learned in an earlier video that for an ideal gas, the internal pressure is zero. This is how the internal energy depends on volume, but of course for a perfect gas, the internal energy only depends on temperature and not on volume, so this whole term is actually zero, and again, if you have an ideal gas, all right, and this expression that we actually have right here, uh, which is this one, this is very important because it produces a, a very nice uh, a counterpoint to something that we already knew. Notice that uh, we already knew how the internal energy depends with temperature at constant volume, okay? But now we have uh, the variation of the internal energy with respect to temperature at constant pressure and both uh, uh, quantities are the same for a perfect gas. Okay, now this uh, uh, interesting result is actually going to allow us to once more determine a relationship between heat capacities for an ideal gas, and you're gonna see how useful that, that is going to be. Okay, so again, a goal of us from uh, this uh, new knowledge that we have derived in this video is to be able to deepen our understanding of the relationship between heat capacities of an ideal gas. What we want to calculate really is just uh, what is the value of this difference between heat capacities for an ideal gas. Okay, so let's see how we do this. 
Now, we know that the heat capacity at constant pressure is just a variation of the enthalpy with respect to uh, temperature at constant pressure. And then uh, the heat capacity at constant volume, which is right here, right? Notice that uh, that is a variation of the internal energy with respect to temperature. And now we can choose either variable volume or pressure. Until now, we were having tempted to use volume because that's how we learned uh, to define the, the heat capacity. But again, now we actually know that that is also equal to the variation of the uh, internal energy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. And this is useful because now these first derivatives, uh, they are at constant pressure, and we're going to be able to manipulate them very nicely that way. OK, so let's see how this turns out. All right, here we go. Uh, we're going to use uh, here the fact that uh, the internal energy is just the sum of, sorry, the enthalpy is the sum of the internal energy uh, plus the product of the pressure volume term. OK, so that term is now going to have two parts. Uh, differential of u over differential of t constant pressure plus differential of PV over differential of t at constant pressure. And now we have to subtract here the variation of internal energy with respect to uh, temperature at constant pressure. Okay, so if very obviously this cancels out with that, and then we have this term left over. OK, so uh, Cp minus Cv is going to be equal to that. But of course, we're going to use here the ideal gas equation of state to recognize that this is simply delta nRT, differential of T at constant pressure. OK, so well, uh, these are constants with temperature. And this simply turns out to be uh, nR, OK, which then uh, results in an equation that we're familiar with. OK, this is the relationship between heat capacities uh, for an ideal gas, which we already knew, but uh, we've been able to derive now uh, with this knowledge from uh, how the internal energy depends with temperature at constant pressure. OK, there's one more thing that we can do in this video to uh, bring things home here. This only applies to ideal gases, right? And it turns out that this um, uh, relationship between heat capacities has a much more universal expression that would transcend ideal gases and, and apply also to real gases, solids, liquids, and any substance. OK, so uh, we're going to write that expression here and uh, introduce the terms. All right, so this is a universal expression that works always. The difference between heat capacities at constant pressure and constant volume for any substance is equal to um, this expansion coefficient squared, temperature, multiplied by volume, divided over a new term, which is called kappa sub t. <clears throat> and kappa sub t is defined as the compressibility, the isothermal compressibility of a substance. OK, so we're going to write here this kappa sub t. And that is minus 1 over v. Isothermal compressibility, so that means uh, the change in volume with changes in pressure at constant temperature. OK, so that would be the first derivative of the volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure. OK, so again, this is a much more universal uh, expansion. And we're going to be using this, uh, these equations and uh, that one as well later in the semester. And there will be a few homework problems that will ask you to um, uh, handle these, these expressions. All right, this video has shown uh, us how to uh, determine the variation of the internal energy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. We have seen that that is equal to the heat capacity at constant volume, and that has allowed us to uh, learn a few useful relationships between heat capacities at constant pressure and constant volume for many substances.